constantly putting the picture of Chris Reeve on, 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 the, on the bunch of pictures we had. And uh, that's what he says. But I remember that I was looking every night in desperation at the Almanac, you know, the, the, the big actor's Almanac. Uh, we have all the actors in the, in the well, all of them are in the States and uh, in the English, I think. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, the, I, I kept stopping on the, on the Reed picture, and, and, and when I noticed more that he had that neck, you know, which, which Superman in the comic always had this kind of big neck. And I said, well, he's got that neck. I mean, you know, he, he can work out. I mean, you know, that. And so finally, Donner was not, you know, still thought he was too, too, too thin. And uh, however, uh, I said, look, let's test him. We don't have a choice. I mean, we're, we're at the last minute here because Brandor and, and, and Hackman were hired before Don. Uh, and, and Guy Hamilton had to leave only because he couldn't work in England and uh, Brandon didn't want to work in Italy because he had uh, uh, made a film called The Last Tango, um, The Last Tango in Paris, and uh, he had a, uh, a warrant for his arrest because in Italy. And he said, I was very not going to Italy. Normally I go to Italy, I'm not going to Italy. So, okay, between Brandon and Hamilton, uh, you know, uh, Brandon after uh, Apocalypse and uh, Godfather and Last Tango you know, was at the top, absolute jor of the movies, really. And, um, uh, well, we had to move from Italy to England. Uh, and, uh, and he had a tax problem. That's when England was taxing at 99%. Uh, people who made more than, I think, 100,000 pounds or $150,000, I mean, so if they made a million dollars, they would keep $10,000. Pretty harsh taxing. <laughs> so he, he couldn't stay there more than like three months a year. I mean, it became impossible for him to do it. So, so, that, so that's when uh, came the decision for a new director, and uh, there was a choice between uh, Mark Robson, who had done Earthquake, it was the big uh, surround sound, you know, and the whole theater was shaking. And, uh, it was a big hit, and he had done some other good movies. And, uh, and then uh, my first ex-wife again, <laughs> <laughs> I thought we had a part of this somewhere, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, said, uh, you know, I know this guy, and he looks like Clark Kent, and he's a great director, just had this movie <coughs> opening, you know, The Omen, and, uh, and my father was then in London, because we were already based in London, and we went to see the Omen, and he said, you know, got it all, it's great. Uh, and then that's when we are in Donner. And, uh, and a lot of things we did in Italy with, with Hamilton, I mean, we, we stayed a year in Italy, and um, frankly, a lot of things were not working at all. And uh, the biggest decision, I think, and I really cannot remember um, who came up with the, the, the actual thought of it. It could have been um, uh, actually the, the set designer, which was John Barry in Star Wars, um, uh, who said we should do it based today and not retro, because we were going to do it like in the comic books in, in the, in the 40s. You know, with the old curtain and the tower and the different kind of uh, outfits and all that. And uh, it, um, uh, that, that was the major decision, and uh, then the rest. But, but the camp, there was never any intention to go camp with that movie. And I must say that if you look at the third part of Superman 1, don't tell me that Otis and Luther don't have moments which are borderline camp, you know. Before the water, or after the water, you put the probe in. I mean, it's just pretty fun stuff, you know. So, to, to digress, if I may, as far as stories with Christopher Reeve, uh, I met him on when I did Superman 3, because I did 1, 2, and 3. Um, and the first, I mean, 
I remember shaking his hand, and mind you, I was eight, and the first thing I said to him is my hand just disappeared. I literally said that because he was he had bulked up, and he was... He, he wasn't a match for more than three. And he was three, big. He was really big. And, but my fondest memory is sitting and having lunch with him in the tent at lunch with all the other day players, all the other background actors, or some of the other cast were in their trailer. He would just sit and talk and just was warm and down to earth with everyone, including me. That's my fondest memory of Chris. So. No, he was the one for uh, Incredible. Uh, always. And, and uh, what, what I know, especially, uh, we did the premieres for, uh, in the States. We did them in Washington with the uh, Special Olympics, which were, uh, were run by the, the late Denise Shriver and, and Sartre Shriver. And, um, uh, and every, every time they would get a big, uh, a big premiere with the film and charity to go for the, these handicapped kids and compete in Olympics, which is great because it gives them, uh, you know, a feeling of, of worth and all that. And uh, where you could see something special with Chris is that he would really uh, relate to these kids in a way that was just natural, uh, you know, as Chris or as Superman or as, I mean, they, he was completely relaxed with them, and they were totally relaxed with him. And, um, you know, a lot of people get nervous and uh, a little bit, you know, scared in a way because you don't know what to do. And, and he was completely natural. And very approachable at that time. Yeah. And, and it showed, I guess, that Superman did it. <laughs> no question. Steve. Being that you missed the summer release, did that affect your pickup price that you got paid by the studio? Was it last? Uh, no, it just, uh, well, the studio by then was, don't forget, we had brand. So the moment we got brand, the studio picked up the film for the day. So that was literally two days after. It was very quick. And so they were involved then at that point. And, uh, and of course, missing the summer was a catastrophe because, uh, well, frankly, the, the, the movie was a summer movie. And, uh, and, and that was the period, I mean, that those uh, mid-70s where really those summer blockbusters started to happen. I mean, Jaws, uh, Star Wars, uh, Exorcist, uh, uh, another one. Uh, Close Encounter. Which one? Close Encounter. Close Encounters, uh, Godfather was a pretty incredible time and, and that's when really the, the movie started to, to, to become blockbusters and actually a lot of people don't know where that comes from this word blockbuster it's because people are lying around the block to get into the theater and they are blockbusting the, the block and if you think about it, it makes sense and, and before that people would not line that way you know like endless and Two, three times around. Did you do a question? Um, sure. What do you think about Christopher Nolan and his focus team in the next season? I think it's very interesting. Very exciting. Right.